This is the fifth part of my 1.17 Hardcore Minecraft world. In this one, we're gonna build the first part of the mansion, which will be a villager trading hall. Also, for those of you who saw the last episode and know we're making a pig farm, where we have one pig for every member in our Discord server, our Discord server has quadrupled in size. So, yeah, by the end of this episode, we're gonna have a pig farm with almost a thousand pigs in it. If you wanna see that, make sure you watch to the end of the video. Anyway, I have 42 levels after breeding all the pigs in the last one, so the first thing I do is enchant my diamond armor. I saw my diamond helmet had respiration 3, so I enchanted it and got respiration 3 and aqua affinity. I jumped in the river outside and... Yeah, I can do pretty much everything I can do on land, but in the water. My next enchantment were my diamond pants, and I only got unbreaking 3. Then I enchanted my diamond boots and got protection 4 and depth strider 3. So yeah, at this point I'm pretty much a fish. Also, somebody sent a message in the Discord asking me to feed Subpig with a golden carrot. Unfortunately, Subpig doesn't like golden carrots, so yeah, that, that, uh, that kind of sucks. Disgusting! To start the trading hall, I'll first need two villagers. So I run over to a nearby village and kidnap and get two volunteers to come back to the base with me. Like always, on my way over there, I did a lot of completely unnecessary parkour. Wow. When I got to the village, I took out my leads and was sad to see that they don't work on villagers, which kind of ruins my plans. Not to worry though, because I can make a boat to boat the villagers. Yeah, I didn't get very far with the boat before I decided that it would be way too slow. Luckily, I'm a Minecraft veteran, so I knew that the best way to travel in the overworld was through the nether. This is because every time you move one block in the nether, you move eight blocks in the overworld. So if I were to take the villagers through the nether, that would really shorten the trip. I got the obsidian from the old nether portal, and then I went to get the obsidian from the one that's bugged as well. I thought it would make me cool if I could water bucket beside the sand to update the sand block, which will make it fall, and then I would MLG bucket at the bottom. But it didn't go as planned. Yeah, I kind of suck. And the Hypixel servers are back up, so I can't even blame it on that. Anyway, I get up, go to the portal, and then destroy it. Then I made a new portal by the village in a spot that would be easy to get the villagers into. Then I realized that I didn't have flint and steel, oh no! so I couldn't light the nether portal. But there was an iron golem in the village, which meant I would be able to make a flint and steel without having to go back to my base. So I hit the iron golem, and then tower up, only to see it not chase after me. Huh? I had a lot of trouble getting the iron golem to follow me. I think they might have made some AI changes in the latest patch, but I don't know. I fixed it by just towering closer to him. That gave me iron, so now all I needed was some gravel. So I did some more unnecessary parkour on my way over to the river. With my new fish enchantments, getting the flint from the gravel was a lot easier. Then I went back to the portal to light it and go to the nether. And it spawned me one block beside where the previous portal was instead of linking it together. Huh? Uh, yeah, I don't really think it's supposed to do that. Then I started to dig in the direction where the other nether portal was. And I dug into a big open area. Um, I didn't recognize anything, so I decided to cross it the only way I knew how. By speed bridging. Now that I had fire protection on my armor, I wasn't really worried about falling. But that didn't really matter because I didn't mess up the speed bridging. Until the end. Yeah. When I finally got there, I built a new portal, and to my absolute delight, spawned right inside of the village. Now it was easy for me to bring the villagers over, so I used a boat and brought the first villager to the nether. Then we head off on a long journey to the portal connected to my base. Finally we made it to the portal, and I got him out of the boat, and sent him to my base. Then I trapped him in the overworld, and I went back to get another villager. And then I started working on building a villager breeder. I got this design from Zingji. I hope that's how you pronounce it, but a link to his video is going to be in the description. After I built the breeder, I let the villagers free, and hoped that they would go to the beds and sleep. The first one did, but the second one didn't. I don't know why he wasn't choosing one of the beds to sleep in, but yeah. I was tired of waiting for him, so I just went in the base and slept. And I fell off my bed. I've fallen and I can't get up. 
In the morning I went back to the breeder and tried to get him into the hole. It ended up working surprisingly well and before I knew it he was in the breeder. There was a creeper in my carrot farm which is a little scary considering how hard it is to see him. Now that I had the two villagers in the breeder I threw my carrots at them and let them breed. The breeder has a chute where the babies fall into, so I dug underneath where the breeder was and connected it to my base. This way when the villagers breed, the babies will fall down the chute and be in an easy position for me to move them to the trader hall. Now that I had a system set up to bring the villagers into the base, I decided to start digging out where the trader hall would be. After digging it out, I dug a little hole for where a villager would be, and I tried to figure out how I would design it. I started with spruce planks and birch logs, but I didn't really like it. Then I tried adding smooth stone slabs, but still didn't really like it. You're ugly, you're disgusting, I'm gonna kill you. This is what I decided on for now, but it'll soon change. I figured the best way to get a villager into that area would be to use rails in a minecart. I then made a railway track going from the chute to the villager trading hall, and I broke the glass to let the villagers out. One of them immediately jumped in the cart, which was nice to see. I then pushed the baby villager into the first villager slot. I wanted to get a bunch of librarian villagers for two reasons. One, so I could trade paper for emeralds, and two, so I can get a lot of good enchanted books. The problem is that I don't have a lectern to turn the villager into a librarian yet, so I go outside to the cow pit and very politely ask them for their leather. That generously donated leather let me make three bookshelves, which let me make three lecterns. I placed one of them down in front of the baby villager, so the first spot of the trading hall is complete. Then I started to dig out the rest of the trading hall. For now, I continue to use the same design, but of course it will soon change. I put another villager in a minecart, but this time I had a lot of trouble actually pushing him to the trader hall. Move! Move! So I had to break the glass above him. I was tired of how badly the villager chute system worked, so I just left the chute open and let the villagers run around. I pushed the second villager into the trader hall, and when I placed the lectern down, I noticed that the first villager had grown up. You're growing up, mother I wanted to get the minecart back, so I broke the minecart, and the villager popped out of the trading hall. Huh? Yeah. Before I could get him back in the hole, he wandered off to the grindstone and decided that would be his new profession. Obviously, I didn't like that, so I fired him from his job and placed a lectern down hoping he would become a librarian. He had other plans though, because he ran over to the barrel of betrayal and became a fisherman. Yes, I eat the fish. I got him fired from that job as well, and finally, when I placed the lectern down, he became a librarian. Then I was able to push him back into the hole and trap him in. When I went to sleep, I noticed there was a baby villager in my bed. So naturally, I pushed the child out of the bed, and then I slept in it. I mean, what is he gonna do, you know, he's a, he's a kid. And then in the morning, I went outside and saved his life. Where are your parents? Oh yeah, okay, uh, I know where their parents are. I saw a zombie in the spiral staircase. That's when I noticed there were no torches down there, meaning water probably went down there and took all the torches out for the third time. Yeah, I'm starting to get really tired of placing the torches there. I thought sub pig would be a better guard pig, but I guess not. I kept moving villagers into the trading hall, and I also replaced some of the birch logs with smooth stone. This is the third time I've made changes to the design, and it's not going to be the last, because the next thing I do is push the villagers back one block, and then place a trap door above the lectern, so I could freely break the workstation without having the villager escape. I also hung lanterns between the villagers, which I think looks a lot nicer. This villager was causing me a lot of problems, so I brought him outside and safely relocated him to a different village. Oh my god! Oh and I did the same thing with this one. I then dug out the floor of the villager trading hall, getting ready to put the floor in. I wanted to use dark oak wood for the floor, so I went outside and started to run, making sure to do a lot of completely pointless parkour. After only a few minutes of running, I found a dark oak forest, and used my diamond axe until it broke. Then I went back to the base. 
I was extremely indecisive about the design of the trading hall, and I switched back to the stripped birch logs as the pillars between the villagers. I placed some dark oak logs in the middle of the floor, thinking the dark oak wood would be a nice contrast from the birch and the stone. And I was right, because it looked pretty good. But unfortunately, the ends of the dark oak wood looks terrible. It is just way too dark. And so that kind of ruins my entire plan of using dark oak. If you remember in the last episode, an enderman betrayed me by breaking my chicken farm. So when I saw this enderman, I took care of him. Round one. Now that all the dark oak wood I got was kind of pointless, I went outside to get spruce wood. And I'm not going to make another one of those super fast jump cut clips, because they really do just take forever. And I already made one for the dark oak wood. Anyway, I saw another enderman, and easily took care of him because I was standing in the water. Hacks bro, freaking hacks. Reported, Woo! I then went back to the base and replaced the dark oak with spruce wood, and I also lowered the ground one block. But none of it really looked very good. Until eventually I tried sideways stripped birch logs, which looked a lot better, and things were finally starting to take shape. And that made me replace the birch logs around the edges with spruce logs. Now this is what the floor looks like. It was time to start working on the ceiling, and unfortunately when I dug up, I found that I was already at the surface. Ooh. I also put smooth stone slabs in the corners to try to make it look a little bit more round. I then went up to the surface to place in all of the glass, making sure to definitely not misclick the glass. Oh. Oh. Uh. And I placed the final two pieces of glass in. It looks pretty nice, but there's still some final touches I need to do, including adding a light source. So I went to the nether and got some glowstone. I made some redstone lamps to put them around the floor and brighten the place up a little bit. The cow pit was looking a little bit thin, so I took some wheat and bred them. And then the cow pit was looking a little bit too thick, so I brought out my axe and thinned it out. I found a zombie villager with armor, and I thought since it had armor on, it wouldn't despawn. So I brought him downstairs, and when I tried to trap him, I noticed he wouldn't go over these rails. So naturally, I decided to trap him with rails. And sure enough, when I surrounded him with rails, he just wouldn't move. Um... Yeah, I wasn't sure if he would despawn or not, so I told Subpig to watch over him while I ran away to try to get him to despawn. And as I was running, I found another enderman. I also found a skeleton that I made shoot this chicken. It also shot a cow. So that's kind of cool. After running a few hundred blocks away, I came back and unfortunately saw the zombie villager had despawned. That uh, kind of sucks. I cut out the back wall of the trading hall and I didn't put much thought into the design. I decided to just keep consistent with what was on the floor. So I added spruce logs in the middle with sideways birch logs beside it. I then added two redstone lamps and spruce logs along the edges. Now everything was complete except for the edges along the roof. I dug around the roof and I just replaced it with some smooth stone slabs. It's simple but I think it looks pretty good. So this is what it looks like so far. Wow! This is only the first section of the giant underground mansion. So what I plan to do in the future is dig all the way down to bedrock and have a bunch of different sections branching off in the walls just like this one. Each section will be a different room and some of the sections will even be caves leading to other areas in the world. I have really big plans for this base and I have even bigger plans for it when the full caves and cliffs update launches, which will, as you know, make the world go a lot deeper, which means the base will be able to be much bigger. So if you wanna follow along with the progress of the base, then make sure you subscribe. I went outside during the night to admire the build and found a skeleton with a fire enchanted bow. And as soon as I got rid of him, another one started to shoot at me.
the skeletons actually started to do a lot of damage. Eventually I got him, but the bow was way too overpowered. So I took his bones and placed him in the barrel of betrayal, where he'll be laying right next to the enderman that broke my chicken farm. Oh, wait, what's this? Oh, it's the 69% of the people watching this right now that aren't currently subscribed. So, uh, you know? What are you doing? I went to the carrot chest and I withdrew enough carrots to breed 1,000 pigs from the 250 pigs we already had. Then I went on my way to the pig farm. And I could really tell where it was because as soon as I got into the render distance of the pigs, my game started to lag. Now I know I won't be able to fit a thousand pigs into the pen that's already there because a lot of the pigs will die from entity cramming. So I dig out an area around the pen to place the new larger pen. And I wasn't digging for very long before my diamond shovel broke. So I quickly went back to the base to get a new diamond shovel. And I enchanted it and got efficiency 4 unbreaking 3. Then I went back to the pig farm and continued with the digging. There was a lot of space I needed to clear for this, and a lot of space that I needed to build to make this happen, but eventually I had an area big enough to hold 1000 pigs. So I made some spruce fences and placed the perimeter. I was finally ready to start breeding the pigs. Running around with the carrot, I was already starting to worry about entity cramming killing me, so I made a dirt bridge for myself to stand on while I bred the pigs. And I started breeding. And it didn't take very long for this to happen. One of the pigs died from the entity cramming. I was already getting worried because I still have a lot of carrots left. There's no time for mourning, so I just continue breeding until finally I ran out of carrots. I'm not even sure how many more pigs I can fit in here, but right now there are a thousand, so I broke the dirt bridge and got an aerial view of all the pigs. If you want to be one of the pigs in this farm, then make sure you join the Discord server and join a community of really cool people. That's going to do it for this episode of Hardcore Minecraft. If you're still watching at this point, then please hit the like button and subscribe if you aren't already. If you want to see these episodes earlier, then make sure you click the bell icon to turn on post notifications. Also, you can follow me on Twitter to see updates on the progress of the next Hardcore episode. The link to my Twitter will be in the description. Alright, peace.